Howdy folks, I hope you're all having a great weekend, and as you can probably tell, Death Stranding is out on the PS4 Pro, and a lot of people have been playing it, a lot of people have been enjoying it, and I suspect a lot more people have been throwing their hands up in disgust and tossing their controllers aside and just walking away from the game after a couple of hours. Um, because, well, how can I put this? Do you recall, recently in Mingles with Jingles, I was talking about the one big thing that I was afraid of for this game. What happens if you let Hideo Kojima completely off the leash? If there's no publisher standing over his shoulder saying, no, you can't do that. No, that's a stupid idea. What, are you mad? <laughs> no, of course you can't do that. For God's sake, get a grip. If there's nobody else uh, sharing the creative vision with him, if he's just allowed to do whatever the hell he wants with no accountability to anybody but himself, the potential for a self-indulgent train wreck of a game is extremely high. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, most, but not all, of my worst fears have been realised, because with Death Stranding, Hideo Kojima has gone full George Lucas, and you never go full George Lucas. Everybody knows that. I don't want to go so far as to say that this is a bad game. It's an exceptionally well-made game. The attention to detail, the sheer intricacy that's been lavished on the game mechanics is absolutely breathtaking. Unfortunately, that's also one of the problems, but more on that later. The story? Well, I don't think anybody's going to be too surprised to hear that the story is absolutely batshit crazy, because this is, after all, a Japanese game, and Japanese game developers in general, and Hideo Kojima in particular, are all as mad as a box of frogs. While playing the game, I was consistently getting very strong flashbacks to the Final Fantasy movie, The Spirits Within, which makes about as much sense, <laughs> and, uh, and shares a lot of the same themes. But this is very definitely Hideo Kojima's own thing. I'm not suggesting he's plagiarised anything. And to be completely fair, apparently if you stick with it and plug your way through the whole game, it does well, the broad strokes of the story do make sense. Well, a bit. <laughs> Mostly. Apparently. Unfortunately, a lot of the details really don't make any kind of sense whatsoever. No matter how forgiving you are of the excesses of Japanese games designers in general, and Hideo Kojima in particular. The thing is, if a batshit insane story was this game's only problem, that could actually be viewed as something kind of charming. That could, and probably would, be a major selling point in certain quarters of the game's buying public, but the batshit insane story is definitely not this game's only problem. More on that in a moment. First, let's get into that story. So, as you can probably tell from this extended intro sequence, some seriously bad shit has happened. An event known as the Death Stranding has wiped out the overwhelming majority of the world's population at some point in the far future. Various different enclaves of survivors still exist scattered around the world, although for the purposes of this game we're talking about the continental United States of America. Various different couriers, of whom Daryl here from The Walking Dead is one, ferry supplies between the various different enclaves of civilization for a living. Unfortunately, thanks to the results of the Death Stranding event, this is an extremely hazardous occupation. The rain here is infected with a substance known as chiral, and it causes accelerated aging in anything that it touches, which is why Daryl from The Walking Dead here is very tightly wrapped up, and also explains some of the weird shit that you've already seen, such as the ravens falling from the sky, hitting the ground, dying, decomposing in the space of a couple of seconds. If that was the only problem that humanity was facing, that would be bad enough, but it isn't. The billions of people who died in the Death Stranding event are kind of stuck between this world and the next. They're known as Beached Things, or BTs. Encounters between living humans and BTs rarely end well for the living humans. But there are some humans who, thanks to the massive chiral contamination in the ecosystem, have developed certain beneficial mutations, certain allergic reactions, for example, as you can see 
Daryl from The Walking Dead reacting here to the presence of a beached thing. They're invisible, he can't see them, but he knows when there's one nearby. Can we just take a moment to appreciate some of the little details here? Have you noticed that whenever one of these footprints appears, you get the footprint, but the claw impressions happen as it steps off, which is exactly what would happen as the weight transfers forward, as whatever this creature is, steps forward from one foot or hand to the next. This game is absolutely chock full of little details just like that. Unfortunately, cool though that is, an overabundance of little details is one of this game's biggest problems. And it's only one of this game's biggest problems. Death Stranding has been referred to as a walking simulator. Now, Death Stranding is certainly not the first, and it certainly won't be the last game to be lumbered with that kind of description. However, whereas other games have been referred to as walking simulators in a sort of half-joking way, Death Stranding takes that sort of thing very, very seriously indeed. In fact, it takes it seriously to such an extent that I can't help but think that Hideo Kojima had spent some time looking at games like Firewatch and The Vanishing of Ethan Carter and was just thinking to himself, hold my beer. Remember, Daryl from The Walking Dead here is a courier. It's his job to ferry packages between various different outposts of civilization. And you are going to spend the overwhelming majority of the game doing pretty much exactly that, walking. Although later on you will be driving or riding, but mostly walking across some extremely rough but exceptionally gorgeous terrain with some extremely heavy loads on your back, arms and legs in the shape of the packages that you're delivering. Which means that you not only have to spend a lot of time managing the load and ensuring that it's balanced as evenly as possible, but also fighting Daryl's natural inclination to fall over <laughs> while he's carrying these loads around the world. So I'm really not exaggerating when I call this game a walking simulator, because that is exactly what you are going to spend most of your time doing. Walking Daryl between point A and point B, and trying really, really hard while you're doing it to avoid falling over. Because if you do fall over, whatever you're carrying is going to get damaged. And if whatever you're carrying gets damaged when you finally make it to your destination and deliver the packages, and I am not making this up, you won't get as many Facebook likes. <laughs> no, seriously, this is what I said. This is what happens when Hideo Kojima is left to make the game that he wants. He goes full George Lucas. If the packages are delivered late or in a damaged condition, you don't get as many Facebook likes as you would if they were delivered on time and in good condition. It's not quite as preposterous as it first sounds. It all goes towards improving your rating as a courier, which further on down the line will open up further options as your rating improves. But it's little details like this that initially appear to be batshit crazy, but do actually make sense within the wider context of the game world that Kojima has created. And to be completely fair, this particular aspect of the game isn't really that preposterous to begin with. I mean, it sounds comical when I put it like that, but at the same time, it's more or less exactly what we do every time we rate an Uber driver. So all he's really doing is taking something that's already happening in the real world and just taking it on to the next level. So we'll let him get away with that one. But there are many, many other tiny little and not so tiny little details where you're just left thinking, what? Again, to be completely fair, and credit where credit's due, the visual artistry that is lavished upon some of these moments just beggars description. In fact, we're going to show you one here. Now, at several points throughout the course of what you're about to see, you're going to be thinking, Although, once again, to be completely fair, several of the things that you're about to see, you're not actually expected to fully understand just yet at this early stage of the game. 
you may find yourself asking questions like what the hell is going on with the suspension of that car? Is this the kind of world where being as far above the ground as possible can save your life? In which case that would actually quite make sense, but we don't actually know that just yet. But one thing that is about to be made abundantly clear to us all is just how serious the people of this world are when it comes to disposing of bodies correctly. Igor, Bridges Corpse Disposal. Sam Porter, I presume? Right. Not the touchy-feely type. Takuma said you had some kind of phobia. Bridges Corpse Disposal? What happened? Look, gotta get a move on. I'll explain as we go. Come on. Come and take a look. He's got a date with the incinerator. How long since he flatlined? We don't know the exact TOD, but I'd say it's been upwards of 40 hours. He wasn't quarantined. Not sick. This is a suicide. Oh, Jesus. We're just lucky we found him at all. Got him on ice ASAP, but who knows when he'll go necro. Where are you taking him? Uh, closest incinerators to the north. This route's crawling with PTs. Sure you can't use another? I wish I could, but there's no time. Then just burn the poor bastard right here. You put all that Kyrillium in the air so close to town? Can't do it. Better that than trying for the incinerator. Hey, we can do this. We just need someone like you with dooms. Well, he's already in the first stages of necrosis. If we don't hurry, this place is a crater. So how about it? Can we count on you? Then Bridges hereby enters into a contract with Sam Porter. Sam. Just Sam. And I can't spot BTs. Just sends them. That's why we came prepared. A bridge baby, huh? With its help and you, we'll be able to stay one step ahead of them. Makes me feel like shit every time. Well, you are plugging into the other side. Freaks me out, too. Oh, I knew I'd forgotten to mention something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do not adjust your monitors. That is a fetus. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and it can see dead people. Well, of course it can. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> this is a Hideo Kojima game. But again, batshit crazy though this may at first appear within the context of the wider game world that Kojima has built up. The babies that can see dead people actually makes perfect sense, although it isn't explained until later. You know, the world was different when I was a kid. America is a country. Anybody could go anywhere they damn well pleased. No need for couriers like yourself. We had highways, airplanes, hell, you could even visit other countries. Hard to imagine it now. As you can see, the Death Stranding poked us full of holes. Fucked us beyond all recognition. And if you were lucky enough to survive, the time fall came and washed you away. Then those freaks from the beach showed up. The worlds of the living and the dead all mixed together. And that's when folks started holing up in the cities. Couriers like yourself got put up on a pedestal. This guy is basically the Michael York character, Basil Exposition, from the Austin Power movies, because telling you things is why he's here. Son of a bitch. Rainbow! How much further to the incinerator? This guy's about to pop. Shit. We're up to cut to the BTs.
These assholes got us right where they want us. Get us out of here. Sam, can you see anything? No, nothing. Doesn't look like we're going to make it to the incinerator in time. And so we're about to find out what happens to a human body in this world 48 hours after it expires if the corpse isn't disposed of properly.
So, that is what happens in the world of Death Stranding when you fail to incinerate a corpse within 48 hours of its expiring. Uh, it also, incidentally, leaves a crater behind the size of Manhattan Island. Which kind of begs the question that if 95% or more of the world's population was wiped out in this Death Stranding event, and every single person who died and wasn't incinerated afterwards left a hole like that? Why is it that the world looks more like Iceland during a particularly wet summer when it probably should look more like the surface of the moon? But these are the kind of embarrassing questions that Hideo Kojima brushes away with an imperious wave of his hand while demanding that you stop asking embarrassing questions and instead just revel in the sheer artistry that is on display before you. And to be completely fair, there really is an astonishing amount of artistry on display in this game. But to counterbalance that, you also have the ludicrously overcomplicated walking mechanics. I mean, just seriously, in a game that is all about getting from point A to point B, I can't help but feel that there was clearly a point during the game's development where they were all sitting around having a big strokey beard session thinking, well, you know, so much of this game involves walking. How can we spice that up? <laughs> and Hideo Kojima said, wait, I've got it. We'll make it as difficult as possible for the player to stand up straight. We'll make the actual process of walking part of the game mechanics. And there wasn't a single person around that table who said, are you on crack? <laughs> <laughs> because this is what happens when you let somebody do whatever the hell they want. They go full George Lucas on you. I mean, certain aspects of this are actually fairly clever and certainly unique. I don't think I've ever seen a game that has an inventory management system that's quite as important as this, because you do have to spread the load around in order to, well be able to stand up straight and not fall over the second you step off. But even when you've done that, even when you have balanced the loadout and the inventory management screen, you can still find yourself falling over unless you're constantly fighting the controller in order to just make sure that you manage to achieve something as basic as standing upright when moving from point A to point B. And this game is all about moving from point A to point B. So this, in my opinion at least, is probably the game's single biggest problem. They took a system and developed it in a way that could, that had the potential to actually be something fairly unique and groundbreaking. But they just couldn't resist the urge to take it that one little step too far. It's a bit like the Eddie Izzard joke about the difference between looking cool and fabulous and looking like a dickhead. <laughs> because there's a very, very thin line between the two, and it's so easy to step over that line. For example, wearing one eye patch. Ooh, you're going for the pirate look. You're looking very cool and interesting. Wearing two eye patches. <laughs> now you just look like a dickhead. And Death Stranding, unfortunately, is wearing two eye patches. I'd like to say that if that was the only thing about the game that was as stupid as it is, it would be just about bearable. But it's not the only thing about the game that's as stupid as it is. Yeah, that means it's time to talk about the story again. And I'm not talking here about the whole Death Stranding event, the world building that's gone into it, the whatever it was that wiped out 95% of the world's population, um, that left their ghosts 
wandering the landscape as invisible disembodied demons that infused the rain with some kind of element that fast accelerated the aging processes of everything that it touched. I'm not talking about all of that stuff, that's just your fairly standard batshit crazy Japanese game designer in general and Hideo Kojima in particular plot. That in fact is probably going to be a major selling point for a lot of the people who are interested in buying this game. And there's nothing wrong with that. Now I'm once again talking about the details little but very important details that either make no sense whatsoever or are just downright fucking ludicrous. Details like, for example, the fact, because it is made it very clear to you, that Daryl from The Walking Dead here, who, let's not forget, is a courier. He makes a living travelling the world, taking items from point A and delivering them to point B. He's probably one of, if not the most widely travelled people still alive in the continental North America. He gets around a bit. He talks to people all over America. And he has no idea that America still has a president. I need you to bring the president some morphine. What president? America's gone. You talking about the mayor of Central Nod? No, 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 not the mayor. America lives on, Sam. So you have to ask yourself the question, but if the most widely traveled person in all of America doesn't realize that the country still has a president, who the hell does? But it's actually, well, the truth is even more silly than that, because it turns out that the president of the USA is actually Daryl's own mother. And he still wasn't aware, not only that she was the president, or that America even had one. And I have other questions. Why is the president's chief of staff called Die Hard Man? <laughs> um, did he audition for the lead role in Die Hard but narrowly missed a Bruce Willis? And what the fuck is that on his face? Did he have some kind of horribly disfiguring accident like Harvey Dent from Batman that left his face looking like a skull? And he decided to compensate for it by putting an actual metal or carbon fibre skull on his face. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck is going on here? And when the president dies because Daryl fumbles a catch and disconnects his own mother from her life support apparatus, why is black skull face Bruce Willis wannabe so insistent that her body be disposed of with the utmost secrecy so that the world doesn't realise that the president is dead? Dude, based on her own son's reaction alone, her own son who happens to be the most widely travelled man alive in America today, you could announce the president is dead on the radio and everybody's reaction would be what president? And there are other, slightly less obvious but equally amusing issues. The object of the game is going to involve Daryl travelling all the way across America reconnecting the various different outposts of civilization with each other over what's known as the chiral network. It's basically a futuristic internet because apparently what everybody needs in a post-apocalyptic future where almost everybody has died and turned into an invisible demon hungering for human flesh and where the touch of the very rain can accelerate the aging process and kill you within seconds, a future where anybody who dies must be incinerated within 48 hours, a safe distance away from any population centres, otherwise they turn into a biological atom bomb. What everybody needs in this future, according to the office of the President of the United States that nobody even knew existed, what everybody needs is convenient access to Reddit and YouTube. And just in case you thought things couldn't possibly get any sillier than that, Let's just take a quick look at the actual details surrounding Daryl's Odyssey, in which you'll be expected to travel from the east to the west coast of the USA, reconnecting settlements along the way. The distance varies depending on what your starting and ending point is, but which, for example, if you were to travel between New York and San Francisco, it would be just a hair over 2,900 miles, or 4,600 kilometres in the real world, just not in Hideo Kojima's world. Don't forget, every time you complete a delivery, it gives you a summary of all the delivery details, including the exact distance travelled. 
in this case, 9.2 kilometers which is kind of surprising when you look at the post-mission presentation because I've actually travelled from what looks like Columbus, Ohio to what appears to be Nashville, Tennessee which is a distance of 611 kilometres and definitely not something that you'd be expected to do on foot in the space of about 15 minutes. In fact, travelling 9.2 kilometres on foot over that kind of terrain in the space of about 15 minutes is a bit of a stretch too. It's fairly safe to say that Death Stranding has many problems. Artistry, however, is definitely not one of them. And for many people, artistry alone will probably be enough. But I have a sneaking suspicion that for most people, it won't be. When you take away the batshit crazy plot, and the we have smoked one hell of a lot of seriously good drugs world building that's gone into this game, and again, for a lot of people, those are actually going to be major selling points. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. But what is definitely a very, very bad thing is the undeniable fact that this, at its heart, is a game about delivering parcels on foot across extremely rough terrain while carrying extremely heavy loads. For a lot of people, nothing else about this game is really going to matter. I mean, the gorgeous, because they are absolutely gorgeous visuals, the intricately detailed environments, the story, good or bad, whether you love it or hate it, none of that really matters when the core gameplay loop delivering packages is so incredibly tedious. A process that's made even more difficult than it needs to be by artificially introducing a game mechanic that requires you to actually manage the way you walk. Once again, we're down to the difference between being a cool and interesting fashion icon or just looking like a dickhead. <laughs> It's the old one eye patch or two. Introducing an inventory management system that has to take into account the weight balancing of the load that you're carrying. One eye patch, looking cool and interesting. Having to physically manage the steps that you take while walking from one end of America to the other. Two eye patches, looking like a dickhead. Sadly, what appears to have happened with Death Stranding is precisely what it was that I was most afraid of. Hideo Kojima, with nobody around to tell him no, basically went into full-on self-indulgence mode. He disappeared up his own arse. He basically went full George Lucas. And you never go full George Lucas. The game is undeniably a work of genius, but it's a deeply flawed work of genius, and I, I really hope it does find an audience out there, because it's a game that does deserve to be enjoyed by somebody. It's just probably not going to be me. Anyway, that's it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it, I hope you're all having a great weekend, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time. Oh, and while we're still here, the product placement in this game can kiss my arse.